How are you, man? Good, what's happening? Nothing. Congratulations on the film. Thank you. It's, you spent Thank a lot you. of time in Canada. Did you really expect to be in northern Ontario in the uh, cold? You know, man, I, my wife got a job here in 2011 called Suits, yeah. and uh, I spent six months of 2011 here just being Mr. Torres, yeah. uh, which is my alter ego. Yeah. And then um, I did uh, The Colony here 2000. 12 in March. Yeah. So here, North Bay, the Hearn, all these places. Hearn's a tough place, Yeah, man. Hearn is wild, man. Yeah. I'll never forget the Hearn. Do you, are you good at being a tourist? Like, a lot of cats just want to work. No, I'm, I'm good at um, actually sort of entering into the life of a city. So I was here March through December of 2012. Yeah. So I consider myself like a secret Canadian at this yeah. point. <laughs> Well, listen, we're honored to have you. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. Look, in this film, you get to, you have this really nice place that you occupy, which is you get to be, uh, you know, as cultures break down, as a society breaks down, yeah, people yeah. kind of revert back to basic needs. Yeah. You're the guy that hangs on to humanity. Yeah, I'm Big Papa. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the guy who's like, listen, this is our, this is what we have to do. It's dangerous. Out. We can't go over there. Here be dragons. Yeah. Like, we have to be nice to each other and stuff. And we might make it. Yeah. Might. Might. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's set up beautifully because it's so vast. I mean, the movie looks like it costs a lot of money. Yeah. And uh, it's, at the same time, it's really intimate. So I, I don't know, man. It was really, it was the idea that it's, it was something that I've never done. I've never done a movie like this one before. Right. You've and, done a lot of films. And so I've that... been in a lot of movies. Yeah. And I haven't worked, I hadn't worked with Paxton. Um, Zegers, who I wasn't fully aware of. Kevin Zegers, Canadian actor, who's really good. Really wonderful actor. Gossip I mean, girl for some of you. The cat has worked with everybody. Yeah. I went and looked at his filmography. Like me, he's been working since he was a child, and he's really terrific. So I just thought, okay, let's let's go. I want to talk about playing young? Let's go back, really young. Where are we going? You really, let's go back. Okay. Back. Young kid on the street. Take a look. No, no, yeah, what did you say, no, man? That's um, 40 years ago. 40 years ago. That's 40 years ago. I was 12. 12 years old. Yeah. You know, that's a movie where we got to see rage and anger, but that's a movie that's about real it's stuff. It's about real stuff. It, it came out during the so-called black exploitation period in the States, but it really was about a community and a family and a kid telling the truth, about a kid learning to stand up for himself and tell, and tell the truth. But as a guy who's in a position to tell stories for a living, mm -hmm. do you want... Is it, is, What's your relationship with responsibility? My relationship with responsibility is that if there is, if there is an opportunity for us to talk about things that are uncomfortable, yeah. then we should. You don't want to ever hit people over the head with it because ultimately you do have this responsibility to entertain as well. Um, but that's if you can educate as well and, and enlighten, I think that's perfectly reasonable. That's why I think The Matrix worked because you created a scenario where Morpheus gets to say all that heavy. Yeah. Because we expect it to be that. It is right. When you read it on the page, did you get that feeling? When I read it on the page, I thought this is the most original thing that I've ever read, and I really want to be a part of it. So you had your own discovery. So, so yeah, uh, well, I, I made this mistake of thinking that we were just making an action movie because we had to work so hard at that, yeah. you know. And and we we worked, you know, eight nine months to get in the kind of shape that we were in and to to execute all those moves so that by the time the movie came out, I had forgotten all the philosophy that was in the script. <laughs> and then I saw the movie and I was like, wow, that's deep. Wow. <laughs> you know? Did you, were you able to learn, like, what did you learn from working with a Canadian and Keanu that you could apply to working with Kevin in this one? You know, um, here's the thing I will say about that, because I've been sort of living here uh, since 2011. Keanu is a dear, dear friend, and he's unlike anyone I have ever met. Um, he is a unique individual. He is a unique individual. Um, he's kind and thoughtful and compassionate, and he's quite brilliant. Uh, he just plays dumb. Um, but living here, totally, I completely get him now, because I believe that this is the only city in the world that could have produced him. Because of the way we play? Yeah. Just, 
I think there's something that's really just he's a Torontonian, and and there's there's no there's no other Toronto. Stick around more with Lawrence Fishburne <laughs> after this. <laughs> so you're 14 years old, and while some kids are at camp, you're in the jungles of the Philippines with the wild man Dennis Hopper. I'm an American. As his pseudo mentor. If you keep your head when all about you're losing, there's a what kind of mark does that leave? Oh, we'll find out with Lawrence Fishburne next. I don't normally watch films more than once, but I thought The Matrix, I, I loved it. It was amazing. Yeah, it's a good film. <laughs> <laughs> and you were brilliant in it. Oh. I wasn't in that one. Wasn't it? Yeah, you were. You should know. You know, you were in The Matrix. He was the main one. No, no, no. I can assure you I was not in The Matrix. But Lawrence Fishburne was. Maybe that's why you're confused. I know what you're thinking. She doesn't think you all look alike. If, that, if that's... What you were thinking. I've heard, I've heard Sam Jackson say that before. It's been a running gag for like the last 20 years. Have people ever seriously walked up Dude, to you? Dude, I was, I, I had an interview, I was doing an interview in New York almost 20 years ago and a woman from Texas came up and interrupted the interview and, I don't mean to bother you, but I can, can I have your autograph, Mr. Jackson? <laughs> and so I gave her I wrote, you know, blah, 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 Sam Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so Sam and I have this running gag about it, and, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, once upon a time, people used to confuse Al Pacino and Dustin Hoffman. It's not a bad problem to have. Not at all. No. Um, for... I identified you first when I saw Cadence as an usher right, okay. uh, in a movie theater. Right. Then I realized you were the guy in Apocalypse Now. Oh, okay. Because I didn't know. I was young <laughs> okay, at the time. Okay, yeah, right, right. But... And then there's that famous story, and I always said to myself, even as a kid, if I ever get to meet you, you actually did lie to Coppola? I told them that I was 16 when I had my interview. And you were 14. I was 14. <laughs> I think they knew. I don't think I was fooling anybody, you know. I think they just... Because what happened was I was sitting there with them talking to Fred Roos, who was the producer who remembered me something I did when I was really young, and uh, a young woman who was working in the office as a secretary got up and walked through. And as she was walking, Francis finally spoke up, and he just looked at her and he said, excuse me, you think this kid could be 18? And whoever this young woman was, she turned around and looked at me and went, yeah, I guess so. And I think that's how I really, that's how I got over on that tip. You were on set with Dennis Hopper when you were a young man. I was on set with Dennis, and I, I, had, I had no idea who Dennis was. I just followed Dennis around, because yeah. I thought, because he, 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 you know, everything that he does in Apocalypse Now is completely improvised. So good. It's all improvisation. Here's a, here's a moment of Martin Jean in an interview talking about you. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but one of the most astonishing things was to learn that Lawrence Fishburne had saved his life oh, the gosh. first day that we arrived in the Philippines to film Apocalypse Now. This, he'd never mention it, and nor did Lawrence. And we've, oh, I've been friends with him and his family since he was 14 years old. And uh, I... I I need to thank uh, Lawrence for that because it was a, a very good thing to do and it proved very profitable as well. That's amazing. You saved the only rest of his life? Yeah, basically. You know, we were goofing off. We got in this boat, da 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 da, da and he jumped out because he thought he would push us out and then he started, to, he started to sink and I just reacted and just grabbed him and, you know, I have no, I have no recollection of it, and I think that's, I mean, for me, it's always that way. Like all the best stuff I do, yeah. I don't remember it. <laughs> you were a bouncer in the early '80s in Hollywood. Yeah, I was. Other than a bribe, what's the one thing a patron can do to guarantee a jump in the line? Job. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing after that. The film is called The Colony. <laughs> Oh my God, it's in theaters April 26th. Lawrence Fishburne, everybody. We'll be right back.